watching this video that still doesn't know that I'm pregnant, I've been doing a fantastic job at hiding it. I'm now over six months pregnant. Wait, where's the sud? There's the proof. Sorry, not sorry. In partnership with Adobe Video today, I'm going to be demonstrating some of the newest features in Adobe Premiere Pro with a main focus on their new generative extend feature. Every time Adobe comes out with new features, I'm conflicted, okay? Because half of me is thrilled that I get to use these because they're fantastic. And then the other half of me remembers the hours of workarounds that I had to go through when I was editing to get around the problems they've just solved. For all of you, young editors out there that will no longer have to deal with this. I'm just jealous, really. That's all I wanted to say. Now, Generative Extend, along with the other features that we're going to be talking about today, was originally demoed back at Adobe Max in October of 2024, but it has just been fully released onto the newest update in Adobe Premiere Pro as of April 2nd. And really, I just wanted an excuse to play with it. So that's what we're doing today. And if you guys want to stick around to the end of the video, we're going to touch on some of the other new features like media intelligence and the search panel panel, caption translation, and the color management advancements. But first, what is Generative Extend? Generative Extend essentially allows you to seamlessly add frames to either the beginning or end of a clip that otherwise seemingly would have stopped right there. So if you need a couple of extra frames to be able to time your edit better or cover a transition, that's now no problem. And maybe your client wants a few extra seconds to hold on a person's reaction. No problem. This tool even allows you to add additional room tone or finish an incomplete sound effect. Before this, I spent so much unnecessary time duplicating frames, adding frame holds, slowing down footage, all for the sake of missing a few frames and a few seconds of video. And now I can just drag out a clip and Generative Extend creates those frames for me. I'll show you how it works. It's actually really simple. It truly could not be more simple, actually. So you see this Generative Extend icon right here. Basically, you click that and then move over to your clip and you'll either click the start or end of your clip and just drag. So this is what's going to allow you to add those extra two seconds either at the beginning or end of your clip. Now the time it takes to actually generate the video could take seconds or it could take minutes. It varies. Overall though, I think it's impressively fast. Now once the new frames have been created, you'll see AI generated on either the beginning or end of your clip depending on what you just extended. And you can actually right click on this to regenerate for more options or you can also so revert to the original clip if you'd like to. And when it comes to audio, it's essentially the same process, but it does only work on room tone or sound effects. And so here's how it works on a clip with room tone. And here's how it works on an incomplete sound effect. And then if you'd like to generate the audio or video separately, you can simply right click and unlink the media. Now I'm sure what you're asking yourself right now is, is Generative Extend actually any good? And what I have to say to that is, yeah, it's good. And like with any AI tool, over time, you'll learn how to use it best. Now, what I found in my testing is that to get the best results, your clip has to be consistent. Now, what I mean by that is it has to be consistent in terms of the lighting in the video. It has to be consistent in terms of the motion of the subject in the video and with the motion of the video itself, whether it's static, dolly movement, hand howls, whatever. So for example, a smooth push-in or a static shot would more easily work with the AI. And then when it comes to audio, consistency is the name of the game again. So for example, when it comes to room tone, it's building on an existing pattern of sound, like with rain. And then with a the sound effect, it understands how the sound needs to be completed if it's been cut off partway. My point is, is that it's very good. Is it perfect 100% of the time? No. And I haven't found that any AI tool I've ever encountered is. But regardless of that, Generative Extend serves its purpose as a consistent tool that's going to help you speed up your workflow and increase the flexibility of using existing clips in your timeline. Now, as you continue to play around with this new feature, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind. Now, video clips need to be a minimum of two seconds long and audio clips at least three seconds long. You also aren't yet able to generate video on clips that have transparent backgrounds. Video clips also need to meet some specific aspect ratios, frame rates, and resolutions. And if it doesn't match these settings, you can either transfer
transcode the footage in Adobe Media Encoder, or you can add it to a new timeline where the settings of that timeline are correct for these parameters. And then you would just right click and render and replace the footage. Now, when it comes to audio, Generative Extend cannot create or extend spoken dialogue. Clips containing music are also not eligible for extension. And currently only mono and stereo are supported. So that means no surround sound and 5.1 audio formats are compatible with Generative Extend. And all of this is for now, okay? For now, this is new. So now that you've got your intro to Generative Extend covered, you are off on your own to play around with it, but there are still a couple of other features. So welcome to the end of the video where I'm gonna show you some of the other new ones. So the next new feature in Adobe Premiere Pro is media intelligence and the search panel. So if you've ever spent way too long scrubbing through hours of footage just to find that one perfect shot, you are going to love this. Premiere Pro now has AI powered media intelligence and it is a total game changer. It essentially automatically identifies visuals in your footage and tags them for you. So that's people, objects, locations, and even camera angles like close-ups and wides. So all you have to do is open up the new search panel, type in what you want to search using plain language, and it pulls from the AI generated metadata created right inside your footage, like your own personal assistant editor that never sleeps. When I was editing commercial work or documentary work, it felt like no matter how well organized I was, there were still instances during that editing process where I was searching for that one clip that I couldn't find. And do you know how much time this would have saved me? <laughs> and now caption translation. So this one's a little self-explanatory. You can now automatically translate captions, but here's what you didn't see coming. In 27 languages. Inside of Premiere Pro. You can now reach audiences all over the world without having to pay for a translator and that's what I used to do was I would have to pay for a translator for different versionings of my corporate content and now it's all done in the same application. And finally we have color management. This one's really cool. Adobe Premiere Pro's color management system is now more intuitive and powerful whether you're a beginner or a pro video editor. Essentially Premiere Pro now automatically transforms your log and raw footage to SDR and HDR. The minute you drop it into your timeline. You do not have to apply any LUTs to now bring that flat footage back to life. Now with six new color management presets that support the color pipeline in older versions of Premiere Pro, plus the new wide gamut color pipeline, it's easier than ever to mix footage from different cameras and get great results super fast. Lumetri and other color tools are also now color space aware. So that's gonna give you more control for better skin tones, better dynamic range and overall color. Even the LUTs will now adapt to your source settings. So now everything works. Now we don't have enough time today, unfortunately, to get into exactly how this works and how to set it up. So I will have some links to other videos in the description on how you can do this for yourself and the nitty gritty of how exactly it works. So I think that's probably enough for one day. You've got a lot of new features to play around with now. So make sure you download the latest version of Adobe Premiere Pro to try out all of these features for yourself. If you like this video, please give it a like down below, subscribe if you're not already, and hit the notification bell to get notified for all future videos and let me know if there are any other Adobe features you would like me to explore in Premiere Pro, in Adobe After Effects, whatever. See you in the next one. Bye.